Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Head First Thursdays. Today, we're going to get lost. Yeah, it's punny. Hello, and thanks for tuning in once again to Head First Thursdays. I am Brett Hetherington, your host. I am also the owner and director of Head First Studios, a creative identity agency located in Northeast Ohio. This week on Head First Thursdays, I want to take a little time to share a story that really impacted me from the TV show Lost. I am a huge Lost fan. I am among those who actually enjoyed the finale. I, I give a lot of credit to the show for going beyond the ideas of normal, linear time and embracing that idea of life beyond time. Well, anyway, there's one episode of Lost in the first season called The Moth, and it focuses on this character, Charlie. Now, Charlie Pace is a former rock star Well, his band had basically one hit, and then they were a commercial sellout, and Charlie fell into this life of drug abuse, uh, largely because his brother pushed him into it. It was either that, or the band breaks up. Really, you get the sense that Charlie without the band would have been nothing. Uh, he, He really... His passion was music, and he was the only one in the band that was in it for the music. Everyone else was just in it for the fame. So when the oceanic flight that all the characters of Lost are on crashes onto this island, Charlie is in trouble because he is a heroin addict with only one small bag of heroin. So Charlie forms this relationship with another character by the name of Locke, and Locke now has Charlie's heroin. And he tells Charlie, I'll let you ask for it three times. And the third time, I will give it to you. Locke's hope is that Charlie can beat this addiction on his own just through simple act of willpower. Charlie begins to feel, I mean, he already felt kind of like an outsider, almost like he had no purpose there, but he really starts to feel lost and useless, cast aside by Jack and the others who are on the island. Not the others, for you Lost fans. Now at one point when Charlie asks for the drugs back, Locke shows him a cocoon with a moth inside that's Uh, The moth is struggling to break out. And Locke explains to Charlie that he could help the moth out. He could cut the cocoon open and help the moth get out. But the moth would not survive after getting free. The moth needs to break out of the cocoon on its own to build the strength it needs to fly, to survive outside of that shell. Locke tells Charlie that struggle is nature's way of strengthening. Now there's a cave-in at some caves where some of the survivors have moved to. And Jack, the de facto leader of the tribe who is now existing on the island, is trapped. And Charlie figures out a way that he can insert himself into the cave. He's small enough he can climb in through a shaft and help Jack escape. Ultimately, Charlie sees a moth in the cave and follows the moth to a very small opening that he and Jack can then use to get out. This event leaves Charlie feeling like he can actually provide something worthwhile to the community on the island. He begins to find some purpose, some semblance of real grounded identity. Later that evening, Charlie goes up to Locke and he asks the third time for his drugs. And you can tell Locke's kind of disappointed, but he gives Charlie the drugs. Charlie throws him into the fire, completely eliminating the temptation. Now, I love this story because it conveys a very basic principle. The world we live in is difficult. It is broken, it is fallen, and there's a lot of pain and suffering. But Locke is right. Struggle is what makes us stronger. You've always heard the adage, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. When a bone breaks, it heals uh, much stronger. Struggling through weight training, where You might struggle to bench press 20 pounds at first, but continue to struggle through. You literally get stronger, and before you know it, you can bench press 100. The world we live in is filled with struggle, and we have to push through that to be able to become stronger in many different ways. This story has impacted me so much that I've actually used it at two different churches when I was a youth pastor as a teaching example to communicate with students the idea that Struggle is something that God allows us to go through, in large part because 
We cannot overcome sin and brokenness without struggle. We can't do it on our own, but we are given the strength we need to to break through that. So what are you struggling with this week? What circumstances are making your life difficult? And what do you need to push through that struggle so that you can come out the other end strengthened? Leave some comments below. Uh, if you've got some struggles going on in your life, I'd love to interact with you on them. Uh, like I said, former youth pastor. That counseling aspect is part of my DNA now. And make sure you come back next week as I share another story that's a very positive story. So you keep watching. I will keep sharing stories.